Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 30th of January. India confirms first case of novel coronavirus in southern Kerala province. Taliban kill at least 29 Afghan security personnel in renewed clashes. And people in India, Nepal mark Spring Festival with prayers, holy tips. And now for all the details, Indian President Ramnath Kovind led the nation in paying tribute to iconic freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi on his 72nd death anniversary. Also referred to as father of the nation, Gandhi led India to freedom from the British colonial rule. He was assassinated on January 30, 1948. Indian President Ramnath Govind, Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with other leaders on Thursday paid floral tributes to iconic freedom fighter Mahatma Gandhi at his memorial Raj Ghat on his 72nd death anniversary. PM Modi in a tweet said, The ideals of Bapu will continue to inspire people to build a strong, capable and prosperous country. Among others who paid their tributes to Gandhi, also referred as father of the nation at his resting place in New Delhi, were former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi, Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat and Tri-Services Chiefs were also present. Mahatma Gandhi, the man who led India to freedom from the British colonial rule, was assassinated on January 30, 1948, a year after India gained independence. He was assassinated by Hindu fanatic Nathuram Godse. India on Thursday reported its first positive case of novel coronavirus. The health ministry in statement said a student from southern Kerala province who was studying in China's Wuhan University and travelled to India had tested positive for the virus. The patient is stable and is being closely monitored in isolation. As a precautionary measure, health authorities have placed many people under medical watch. Various sea and airports in the country have been screening passengers arriving from China for symptoms of coronavirus. Meanwhile, India's foreign ministry has requested to operate two aircraft to China to bring Indians from Hubei province and is waiting for formal approval. The death toll due to coronavirus is China reportedly climbed to 170 on Thursday. I think uh, doing its best, uh, we are screening everybody who is coming uh, uh, with a travel history from China. And it's all being done at almost uh, 20 airports and anybody with a suspicion that that's how we could uh, even uh, trace this uh, patient. Members of the Pashtun community on Wednesday staged a demonstration outside the Pakistan embassy in Washington demanding immediate release of activist Manzoor Pashtin. Pashtin is known as a vocal critic of Pakistan army blaming it of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in Pashtun-dominated tribal areas. Members of the Pashtun community on Wednesday staged a demonstration outside the Pakistani embassy in Washington seeking the immediate and unconditional release of Pashtun Tahfuz movement or PTM leader Manzoor Pashtin. The protesters raised slogans against illegal abductions and extrajudicial killings of thousands of innocent Pashtuns over the years by the Pakistani state and its army. Manzoor Pashtin was sent to a 14-day judicial remand by a court in Pakistan's Peshawar on Monday on sedition charges over a speech this month in which he allegedly said that 1973 constitution violated basic human rights. The protesters urged the Pakistani government to read their own constitution and stop violating rights of ethnic minorities. Pashtin's PTM, a peaceful social movement, is known for its strident criticism of the country's powerful military, for alleged enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in Pashtun-dominated tribal areas.
It will go to Afghanistan. It will in news from Afghanistan, over two dozen security personnel were killed in Taliban attacks that followed air and ground assaults by government forces on the militant group in Afghanistan past weekend. The increase in clashes between the Taliban and the Afghan forces comes amid stop-start peace talks involving U.S. and Taliban negotiators in Doha. At least 29 members of the Afghan security forces have been killed in Taliban attacks that followed air and ground assaults by government forces on the militant group. The Afghan Defense Ministry has said the forces had killed 51 Taliban fighters in the weekend assaults, but the Taliban hit back, carrying out attacks on security checkpoints in the northern province of Kunduz on Tuesday and also attacked a police station on Monday night in neighboring Baglan province. Taliban spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid, while claiming responsibility for both the attacks in a tweet, said 35 members of the Afghan security forces had been killed in the attack in Kunduz and 17 in Baglan. This comes as the militant group also claimed responsibility of Monday's US military aircraft crash, but officials have said there is no indication the plane was downed by hostile action. The Pentagon on Wednesday identified the names of the two Air Force officers killed in the crash in Afghanistan as Lieutenant Colonel Paul K. Was Guam and Captain Ryan S. Feniouf. The remains of the two airmen were recovered from the crash site in Ghazni province by American forces on Tuesday. Bangladesh has said it will lift restrictions on education for young Rohingya refugees, reducing their risk of trafficking and exploitation. The government's move has been widely welcomed by the United Nations and humanitarian groups. Some 10,000 Rohingya children in the world's largest refugee camp in Bangladesh will start former schooling in April reducing the risk of trafficking and exploitation, officials said on Wednesday. The United Nations welcomed the Bangladeshi government's decision taken as its recent National Task Force meeting on the Rohingya situation, chaired by Foreign Secretary Masood bin Momin. The move aims to initially cover Rohingya children and adolescents living in the settlements in Cox's Bazar, believing that education can protect the young refugees from false promises by traffickers of work and better lives. UN figures show that more than 700,000 Rohingya, 400,000 of them children, arrived in Bangladesh in 2017 following a military crackdown in Myanmar. Bangladesh had earlier forbidden charities and the UN from giving formal teaching in the camps as it could give the impression that the refugees would be there permanently the reversal has been welcomed by child rights experts. The Tibetan government in exile, based in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala, has thanked the U.S. government for passing a human rights bill in support of the Tibetans. U.S. lawmakers passed the Tibet Policy and Support Act 2019 with an overwhelming majority of 392. Tibetan government in exile based in India's northern hill town of Dharamsala on Wednesday thanked the U.S. lawmakers for passing the Tibet Policy and Support Act 2019 with an overwhelming majority of 392. The bill says that succession of Tibetan Buddhist leaders, including the 15th Dalai Lama, be solely to the Tibetan Buddhist community without interference from the Chinese government. The bill also states that if Chinese officials interfere in the process of recognizing a successor or reincarnation of the Dalai Lama, they will be subject to sanctions under the Global Magnitsky Human Rights Accountability Act. I want to thank the uh, U.S. House for passing the Tibetan Policy and Support Act 2019 with overwhelming majority of votes. This sends a very strong message uh, to the Chinese government that the support for Tibet in America is as strong as it used to be um, in 2002 when the first uh, Tibetan Policy Act was passed. Meanwhile, China on Wednesday expressed strong indignation over and firm opposition to the passing of the bill saying, it seriously violated international law and basic norms of governing international relations. 
Beijing sent troops into remote mountainous Tibet in 1950 in what it officially terms a peaceful liberation. Spiritual leader the Dalai Lama fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. People in India and Nepal on Thursday marked the Spring Festival of Basant Panchmi with fervor. Scores of Hindu devotees took holy dips in rivers and worshipped Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge and wisdom. Hindu devotees converged at the banks of Sangam, the confluence of rivers Ganges, Yamuna and mythical Saraswati in India's northern Priyagraj city on Thursday to take holy dips on the occasion of Spring Festival Basant Panchami. Basant Panchami marks the onset of spring season and glorifies Saraswati, the Hindu goddess of knowledge and learning. Artists and students offer special prayers to Goddess Saraswati on this day and pray for wisdom. In Indian capital New Delhi, devotees gathered at the Hazrat Nizamuddin Aulia Darga, the shrine of Sufi Saint Nizamuddin Aulia, to sing religious songs and offer prayers on the occasion of Sufi Basant. On this day, people dress in yellow, which is the color of spring, and prepare a variety of sweets flavored with saffron. यहाँ पे बसंत का प्रोग्राम मनाए जाता है हर साल 800 साल से मनाए जा रहा है बाबा के दरबार में यहाँ पे हिंदू, मुस्लिम, सिख, ईसाई और धर्म के लोग आते हैं और बसंत पंचमी का प्रोग्राम बनाते हैं यहाँ पे दरबार शरीफ में वो आज भी है बसंत का प्रोग्राम और आर्मेज़ा बाद धर्म के लोग आए हैं य Meanwhile, in neighboring Nepal, people along with their children gathered at school grounds to worship Goddess Saraswati on the occasion. On the occasion, people start their children's education and admit them to schools or hand them over a pencil or a pen for the first time. The festival is also known as Sri Panchami in the country. A group of 2,126 people came together this week to perform a sword dance in a display of culture, art and valour of Hindu Rajput warriors in India's western Gujarat province and set a new Guinea's world record. A group of 2,126 people came together to display the culture, art and valour of Hindu warrior group of Rajput by performing sword dance in India's western Gujarat province and set a new Guinness World Record on Tuesday. Women dressed in colourful traditional dresses moved gracefully in coordinated movements performing talwar ras or sword dance. The record was for most number of people, men or women, performing group dance with sword while dancing for at least five minutes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to announce a new Guinness World Records title here today in Rajkot uh, for the most people dancing with swords. Uh, the final result was uh, 2,126. Mandhata Jareja, the 17th king of the over 400-year-old erstwhile princely state of Rajkot in Gujarat said, the sword dancing embodies our unity, valor, bravery, art and skill combined into one. We are honoured that this shows and embodies, exemplifies that sword dancing is our unity, our valour, bravery and art and skill which all goes together, which all is, is merging together to showcase before you one of the greatest dancing you have witnessed. The art of sword dance dates back to Mughal era when Rajput women welcomed their men after they returned victorious from a battle. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India confirms first case of novel coronavirus in southern Kerala province. Taliban kill at least 29 Afghan security personnel in renewed clashes. And people in India, Nepal mark Spring Festival with prayers, holy tips. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthEastAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SouthEastAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SouthEastAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.